Okay, so our community drop-in for November is open. I'll hand over to Kelly and Laura, our accessibility gurus, and they'll start the session <laughs> and introduce the speakers. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Edward. Thank you very much. Sorry you can't see me. I'm sure it's, if, if anybody, if, if your main motivation for coming along is to see my big face on your screen, I'm afraid you're out of luck because my camera's not working today. So I'm just a disembodied voice. Um, but yeah, welcome. Um, just to let folks know as well, in terms of the structure of today, um, Edward mentioned we are recording. But what we're going to do is we're going to record the um, uh, kind of demonstration presentation element um, with with Jane from Dolphin and the, the Q&A as well. But the, the kind of second part of today's session as well, Roz is going to be leading us in a very kind of kind of free and exploratory, exploratory conversation. Um, and for that, we're not going to record that part because we want people to feel kind of very free to discuss. And we've also got a Google Doc as well where people can contribute anonymously as well, just so you feel, you know, it's a nice kind of safe and um, free environment. So my name's Kelly, if you've not met me before, I'm one of the, um, oh, I'm not, I was gonna, I forgot I've got a different job title now. I, I used to be, <laughs> <laughs> I'm now the program lead for accessibility at JISC, and I'm joined by my partner in crime, um, Laura. Would you like to say hello? Hello, everyone. So good to see you all as you're still ticking in. So it's lovely to uh, be back. I'm so excited for this session. So yeah, good to good to see you. All. Yeah, great. And again, for you know, for engagement purposes, we've got the chat box. Also, very welcome. You know, to use your mic, raise your hand, and as I said as well for discussion, we've also got a. Uh, open Google Doc as well, which we'll share. Um, so what I'm going to do now is think, you know, we'll probably still see some people dribbling in, but I think we want to get going. I'm going to hand over to our first guest today, Jane Brassington from um, from Dolphin Computer Access. So one of the, you know, some of you may be familiar with Dolphin, some of you may, may not. The kind of one of the big players in the, the world of technology for vision impairment and for, for other access needs as well. The only thing I'll say is just before I go is, and I'll be poking you in the chat as well, if you could remember to pop um, in the chat box the um, where you're from. And if you'd like to maybe pop your job title, that's always in just interesting as well. But it's really useful for us to know as well where uh, people are joining us from, because then we get a, a feeling for the reach of the drop-ins and it also helps us to keep them kind of flexible and not have to be kind of really strict about who can book and who can't and things. We want to keep it nice and open, as open as possible. So please do introduce yourself in the chat while um, Jane kicks off. So Jane, I will hand over to you. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you to Kelly and Laura and, and Edward for the invitation. Um, my name is Jane Brassington. I'm with Dolphin Computer Access. Um, we're a software developer and um, Kelly suggested today that we focus on the supernova uh, range of products, which is magnification and screen reading um, for people uh, with low vision and blindness. Um, and she also suggested that we particularly look at low vision students who are maybe transitioning into using speech um, and how we can support and help those people. Um, so what I'm going to do is I've got a few slides. Um, the idea being that I can share them afterwards and then you've got sort of links to resources. Um, I'm also going to do um, a little demo at the end to show some sort of practical tips how you can support students with these sort of needs. Um, I'm happy to take questions as we go through. Um, I've got a colleague on the call who can also answer questions in the chat box um, and, and maybe we can open up a little discussion at the end as well. So um, obviously we've only got a short amount of time, so I'm just going to sort of dip in. Um, hopefully it will give you some uh, some food for thought and we can explore more at a later date or another session if there's more that you want to do. Um, so I'm just going to start um, by sharing my screen. Um, I'm, I will obviously uh, um, share the slides uh, afterwards, so the link is afterwards. So if you if you need that, um, uh, you'll have those available. OK, so let's just do a quick screen share. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, let's go back. All right, so for people that can see the screen, can you just confirm you can see my first slides there? Yes, we can. That's yeah. great. And just let anyone who's just joining as well, Jane is going to share her slides with me afterwards so I can send them along to you. Yeah, 
Yeah, super, thank you. Okay, so the topic I was given was successful deployment of assistive technology for students with vision impairment. Um, obviously, I'm coming from the point of view of, of our product, Supernova, which is a magnifier and screen reader. Um, other products are available, but uh, we'll be focusing on that today. Um, again, deployment sort of means different things to different people. Um, when I think of deployment, I perhaps think of, you know, like a site-wide deployment of, of a piece of software. Um, you might also be thinking of terms of how you deploy it to, to the students in front of you, how you make it uh, how you make it useful for them. So we're sort of going to dip into a bit of both of those things. Um, so Supernova comes, for those who don't know, in three editions, Magnifier, Magnifier and Speech, uh, and Magnifier and Screen Reader. So back in the day, Magnifier and Speech used to be called Luna Plus. I noticed somebody in the chat mentioned they used to use it, so that's great. Um, Magnifier and Speech will essentially read the text that is on the screen. Magnifier and screen reader will describe it, so it'll tell you whether there's you know, a selected or unselected checkbox, whether something um, is a link or a heading. Um, um, it will give you descriptions so that you can use Windows without sight. Um, and the nice thing about having it in a range is you, you'll often get someone who maybe early in their learning career just needs a little level of magnification. Um, their sight may change over time, and it means you can increase the level of support without them having to learn something new. Um, we always try and encourage people to go for the magnifying screen reader, so the full product, um, if, if they've got the funding to do so, simply because you can start with magnification features and you can add speech as you go through. So you, know, you might have a degenerative condition, you might just have bad eye days where you're just a bit tired and you need extra support, and so you can increase that support as you need. Um, so what does success look like then for us? Um, so in terms of, of students, we're looking for independent learning. And in order to support that, you're going to have uh, you know, a selection of different study techniques that you might recommend to your students. Um, you would hope that they would come through um, secondary education with some of those already. Um, but depending on when uh, they lose their sight or, their sight or or how their sight condition develops, that, that might look different for each student. We want student confidence and productivity. Um, so we want them to be confident using their technology to the point that it becomes transparent and they can just get on with their work. And in order to achieve that, um, they might need training on relevant technical skills. Um, so how to use the features that meet their personal needs. Um, you also need availability. Um, and for that, you might need IT admin support. Um, so availability of the software might look like having a, a license available on their personal laptop or their personal uh, Windows tablet. It might also look like having it deployed best case scenario you know throughout the throughout the environment so for example we've <clears throat> uh, we're working with the uh, the team at Cardiff University and they've got Supernova deployed throughout their estate so that it's available for staff and students on any devices that they log into um, the way that we license the software supports that so you don't have to pay per install or pay per device you just pay for the people that need to use a user license um, and so we have an enterprise product that can be deployed with the support of the IT administrators. Um, it's a, an unattended installation, so they can roll it out to any devices that, are, that need to use it. Um, so I would really like to share a very short video, which is just two minutes. Um, I need to make sure that the audio can be heard. Uh, I've got computer audio. Um, I'm going to play this. and. Can somebody shout if they can't hear it? And if you can't, then we'll just leave the link for later. But I think it's relevant because it's a student who's grown up with Supernova. Sorry, that was awful. Um, <laughs> let's try this. Is still sharing the PowerPoint slides, Jane. All right, can somebody, can you see the video? No, I'm not able to see the video, not Jane. Not able to see the video. Okay, let me just try again. Really sorry, let's try that again. Um... Are you able to see the video now? Yeah, can see the video. Were you able to hear it? Uh, I've not been able to hear it, no. Okay, okay. Tell you what, we're gonna we'll skip that. I'll just share it in the slides afterwards. So, um, basically, uh, let's just stop there.
basically it's a two minute video um, following a student um, who's using Supernova in university for her studies and she explains how she's increased the level of support during her studies from uh, secondary school. So I'll leave that link in the video. I apologise for that little technical hitch, um, but we'll come back. Uh, we'll come back to that at another time. Um, so I'll share that link with you later. Um, OK, so uh, just coming back to then um, the, the skills that we recommend uh, for students. So let me go back to sharing my uh, slides. OK. OK, so the recommended um, skills that we, we would encourage you to share with your students is very first off, if they're new to screen reading and they've only been using a magnifier or maybe they've only been using Windows magnifier, understanding synthetic speech. So listening to a speech synthesizer is a skill that you need to practice. Um, we hope that uh, as they get more comfortable with it, they will accept speech um, as a real benefit. So it really does improve um, accuracy. So in terms of like spell checking, you can hear when an error is uh, you can hear errors as you're reading through and proofreading. Um, there's, uh, there's been some uh, research some time ago to show that um, comprehension is improved if you're looking and listening at the same time. And also your speed. So you can actually uh, read uh, research documents and check your work uh, at a much quicker rate if you're using uh, synthetic speech. Uh, we also recommend uh, teaching the skill of listening to a lecture at the same time as a screen reader so that you've got uh, sort of two audio inputs, if you like, and you, you get used to processing those. So that's a skill that um, certainly um, one of the QTVI teams that we work with um, in one of the regions, they, they teach their secondary students that specific skill. So listening to a teacher at the same time as listening to your screen reader. Um, if you're doing online sessions and online learning, um, or you're, you're in a Teams conference, um, there are some tools you can use in the software that will split the audio so that you've got your um, teacher in one ear or your lecturer in one ear and your screen reader in the other. And we'll look at that, um, uh, that little tip later as well. And also just encouraging higher listening rates. They start to increase that speed as they get more and more comfortable. Um, one of uh, one of the university students we worked with who, who shared some experiences with us um, was sort of quite proud to report that he could uh, listen and read much faster than his, his sighted counterparts because he could read at 700 words a minute when he had his uh, speech running really fast. So it enabled him to get through sort of research papers much faster. So uh, just really recommend those skills. So synthetic speech for beginners, um, accepting that it's actually going to benefit your learning and it's going to make you um, uh, more accurate. It's going to help your comprehension and help with speed of getting through things. And also the skill of listening to two different inputs at the same time. Um, so what I'd like to show you in this little practical session are some uh, tips that will support your learners as they're as they're moving through. So it, when you're introducing speech, you might introduce it as, you know, on, on a good day or a bad day, you might want different tools. And we, we try and modify uh, the Supernova product to support you in that. So, you know, on a bad day, uh, you might want to maybe invert the colours to increase uh increase the sharpness of the text on the screen or use bold or sharp fonts to increase visibility. Um, you, if you're working with a spreadsheet, you might want to fix the mouse so that you don't get that sort of wide movement. So you get that nice smooth movement either vertically or horizontally. We'll look at that. And also just to introduce speech, turn on reading text under mouse. So you can point your mouse at the thing that you want to read and hear it read back. Um, as you come to increasing the speech, um, so you want to sort of increase that speech support, uh, you can do what we call read from here. So you can use the mouse, uh, middle mouse button to click or the plus uh, on the numeric keypad to start reading. And you can start reading with synthetic speech. Even if the speech is turned off, you can start reading from any point on the screen, whether you're reading a web page or a document um, or research paper. Um, I'd also recommend introducing uh, the dot reader. So I know that um, recently there's been some issues with read aloud being broken. Um, so you can actually load PDFs into our doc reader document and that enables you to um, scan and read in accessible PDFs. Um, so as if it was an image, you can scan that text and read it or you can also just um, read through the text and it will wrap the text into a window so that you don't have to sort of move around left and right through the document with your mouse. And we've also got another product called Easy Reader, which is not the subject of this particular session, but I'd encourage you to look at that as well for loading in digital documents and reading them on different devices. Um, and then when it comes to increasing speech, I talked about the different levels of supernova that are available. Um, so if you start with the magnifier and screen reader, 
you can reduce the verbosity. So the verbosity is the amount of description that you get. You can reduce that down to a minimum level, which just reads the text on the screen. We can then start to increase it to increase descriptions, adding punctuation, adding uh, announcement of errors, grammar errors, spelling errors, that kind of thing, announcing headings. So you can increase the amount of description that you get. Um, as you go through and really can just tailor it so that you just get what's useful to you and then reduce the unnecessary stuff which keeps you sort of fast and productive. Um, and then I mentioned also the idea of uh, being able to listen to the lecture at the same time as a screen reader so I can show you um, how to manage that audio splitting so you can have your screen reader in one ear and your, um, your lecturer in the other. Okay so um, obviously there's a lot more things that we could look at but given the time that we've got available I just wanted to focus on those those few things so um, what I'm going to do now is um, switch my camera oh yes just before I finish um, we talked about admin support as well so I mentioned that Supernova can be made available across the site with an enterprise license um, something that we also have which I'm not going to dig in today is uh, an, an optional whiteboard wizard that the IT admins can download so you would need your students and your lecturer to be on the same network at the, at the moment, although we're developing, we're working on that. Um, and it enables the student to view the live presentation uh, from the lecturer's uh, device on their own laptop, and then they can apply their own uh, visual settings to it to make it easier and, to, and also take snapshots for use in, in notes and so forth. Um, we also recommend that you uh, get your IT team to whitelist Supernova to avoid any conflicts with security software. That's just a general advice that you would probably do for any assistive technology. Um, and then obviously, if your IT team have questions, um, we've got our support team here in, in Worcester. So we've got a phone number and email address for support. Um, and there's also an opportunity on our website, you can book a time support slot. So if you want a, a call back within a specific time frame, they can book within, a, I think, two or three hour window, morning or afternoon. Um, so uh, without further ado, I'm going to switch cameras again. So bear with me. Stop sharing first. Okay. So I hope that you can see uh, in front of you my uh, my screen there. Um, yeah, can see that, Jane. Oh, super. Thank you, Simon. I'm just going to move across here so we can. Right. So um, I'm just on a, um, a Surface Pro touchscreen at the moment. I'm, I'm increasing and decreasing uh, the size of the text by pinching to zoom. Um, I uh, have got the speech turned off at the moment. Um, you remember that I spoke about being able to uh, add and remove uh, speech as needed. This is, uh, for those of you that haven't seen it before, this is the Supernova control panel. Um, we've got Super visual. I've got the switch on there. So we've got um, text under mouse, read text under mouse on, so I can point at speech. the text. Braille. Media. So the four tabs speech. there, the four tabs there on the control panel uh, lead us to the most commonly used controls um, for the software. Um, so we're going to look at um, a couple of things. So I talked about uh, inverting the colours. So um, if you're having a particularly uh, bad eye day, you might find that just something as simple as inverting the colours um, just makes things a bit easy to see. Colour scheme on. OK, and I can do that with a hot key or I can do it with a button on the button bar, uh, which is this one here. Enhancements. Colour scheme. OK, and that's something that uh, in the short video that I, I attempted to play but failed, um, Charlotte mentions as being something that helps her when she's having a bad eye day. Um, we can also... Um, uh, improve the fonts. So um, if I turn that off, color scheme off. We've got something called a uh, bold fonts. Sharpening on. And sharpening. True fonts bold on. So um, supernova control panel. I'm just going to turn the speech off a second. Speech off. If I zoom in here, hopefully you can see um, where the highlight is. You've got white text on a blue background. If I turn the sharpening off, I'm using Control Shift and Eight on the numeric keypad. Um, you've got the white text on a blue background. If I add the sharpening, it adds a darker line of contrast around the text, which hopefully increases the contrast and the visibility. Um, it doesn't probably come out terribly well on the camera here. Um, but the point being, this is really useful if you're reading a document that's in grayscale or an application in grayscale, you can really enhance that visibility um, if you're having a bad eye day. Um, the other thing I mentioned was the bold font, so you can turn that off, so that's shift and eight on the numeric keypad. 
bold fonts off and bold fonts on, and it just thickens up that text to improve the contrast. Um, one of the things that Supernova does quite nicely is that it's also usable where text is already in bold. So um, if you've got a, a research document where something's highlighted in bold um, uh, and the rest of the text is uh, plain, or you've got an unread email that's in bold, um, the Supernova bold fonts will enhance that further so you can still see the difference between what the author intended to be bold uh, and what is regular text. Um, there we go. So um, let's reduce that back down again. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show you uh, was uh, where you would change the read text under mouse and how you can fix the scrolling. Um, so um, if you go to um, speech menu and you go to general announcements, um, let's turn the speech on here. You've got the announce text under mouse checkbox, which is halfway down the dialog. And then you've got some options in terms of units. Um, so I always recommend that you use the object unit because that will read the item in context. Um, so if I turn the voice on again. Announce braille changes. Um, so uh, we've got the, we've got the, the option to announce the object. Next object, characters, object, line, paragraph. Um, so obviously if you're reading um, on a website or reading a long document, it's quite nice to be able to read a whole paragraph at a time without having to move line by line with your mouse. Um, if you're moving across uh, um, different objects like on the desktop, for example, um, then reading the whole object, object. Um, will read you know, multiple lines associated with the same object. Um, so again, if you're reading uh, a research document, we'd probably recommend paragraph. paragraph. General announcements, announce text under mouse, text okay. unit, and then OK. And okay. Supernova control panel, visual, super. OK. Um, so the other thing I wanted to show you uh, regarding mouse use was the fixed scrolling, which is a, a, again, a relatively new feature. So if I go to the visual. Visual, visual, there's advanced options dot 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 and I get to advanced options advanced visual advanced options and under tracking tracking mount visual advanced options focus tracking um, mouse tracking general preferences highlight hot until hotkey released overview visual advanced options and magnifier and I've forwarded 2.7. Forgotten where that uh, feature is. So let's just look at the help. Okay. Supernova control panel. So this is a good one. So um, I'm going to give the help. X. Supernova to... help. Type in the word S to submit. L. Mouse scroll. And search. Type in the word S to search for. Super. Man. Type in the word using your camera. Viewing the presenter's computer. Visual advanced options dialog, super note, dolphin cursor on, heading two, no colon, the standard bold and sharpen options are not, highlight op key action group dot, visual highlights cap inserted object, 1.8, the settings, dolphin cursor, super note, help. All right, I've lost that one, so I'm going to come back to that um, at the end of the session. Um, okay, so in terms of increasing the speech, um, if we're going to read something, um, reading from here using the mouse or keyboard. So if I turn the speech off. Speech off. Um, and I open a document. Uh, let's open one here. Okay, I can start reading any time just by pressing plus on the numeric keypad. Supernova is a professional quality magnifier and screen reader designed for real world hardware. And I can start and stop. And when I stop, it routes the uh, cursor to the last word spoken by the synthesizer. So let's just increase the magnification there and you can see that. Um, again, if I put the highlighting on you, we have to see uh, the highlighting as spoken. So we'll put highlighting on and then come back to there and then start reading. Hardware, it is fully featured and easily configurable to all types of visual needs and personal preferences. My work has very kindly gone out and bought me a 49 ultra wide monitor to replace. And when I stop, it routes the cursor to the last word spoken by the synthesizer. 
Um, and you can start and stop with the space bar um, and also with the plus key. Um, I can also start and stop using the middle mouse button as well. So I, if I'm a mouse user, I can do that just as easily. Um, in terms of the dock reader as well, um, if we come back to the um, come back to the control panel, uh, we're going to look at uh, media. And if I open file, uh, I can open uh, documents uh, from anywhere anywhere um, uh, on my system. Um, See what we've got here. But we can open here all sorts of uh, different documents, so PDF, image files, or doc reader files. Um, and that's a really good way um, of, of uh, opening image documents as well as PDFs, and you can read them in there. Um, if I was to um, also open any Word document in there, it will wrap the text um, to, to the window. So let's open this one in Doc Reader here. So you'll see there that the text is wrapped to the screen. And again, I can have different colors and different highlights on it. And it will also put the same uh, in there for um, if you have a, it will also load a PDF in there as well. Okay. Um, so I talked about the verbosity levels as well. So increasing and decreasing the amount of speech. Um, so just check how we're doing for time. So very quickly then, um, if we go to the verbosity settings, the speech menu, we've got verbosity levels. So minimum is just reading the text on the screen. Low will give you a little bit more. Uh, medium will describe, uh, describe the control. And high uh, will give you full description and tell you what to, how to interact with the control. So for example, it will tell you um, press space bar to select um, if you have a checkbox. Um, or enter to accept. Okay, so uh, speech uh, verbosity levels, and you can also control those with hotkeys as well. And then the final thing I wanted to show you um, was uh, audio splitting. So if you're, uh, you're using an online session, uh, maybe you're in an online lecture and you want to have the audio uh, in one ear, uh, then we can go that again through um, the speech uh, advanced options audio, split audio, and then you can have your screen reader on the left or the right channel. And also um, when you're speaking or when somebody else is speaking, you can duck the audio so it'll reduce the sound from the, the screen reader so that you can hear two things at the same time. Okay, so um, there's a couple of things that um, I, I, we've come to sort of the end of the half hour. So there's a couple of things that I missed there um, that I will add in the, in the notes afterwards and um, that I share with Kelly. So I'm just going to come back and see um, if there's any questions from what we looked at. Jane, there is a question about whether this uh, the screen reader can announce uh, whether text is bold. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so um, that's something that is in the, um, the speech options. So text style announcements under the speech menu, text style announcements. I'll just quickly switch back and show you where that is. So um, you've got speech menu, text style announcements, um, and then you've got uh, underline change, weight change is what we would call um, announcing bold text. And then you've also got lots of options, so spelling, grammar, heading, um, so all those things you can have. Um, and also you can change where and when they're announced. So um, in a read from here, so if I'm reading a long document, I might not want everything announced. I might just want to get, you know, if I'm reading a research paper, I just want the text. I don't want to be told um, every little change to the font. Um, so I would maybe have it turned off in my read from here. Um, but if I'm editing something, um, then I would definitely uh, maybe want that turned on. And I would maybe want grammar errors announced as well to remind me that I need to go back and check my work. And Catherine also asked whether um, you can install or use custom TTS voices with Supernova as well. 
you can. It needs to be a SAPI 5 device. So um, that's a, a particular standard. Um, so what you would do there um, is you use, we have something called the Synthesizer Access Manager. So under Speech, Advanced Options, um, I know it's not that one, sorry. Uh, it will be, and sorry, General Advanced Options. We've got something called SAM set up with Synthesizer Access Manager. And that's where you would load your um, other synthesizer. If it's not a named synthesizer on this list, you'd use the SAM to SAPI 4 or SAM to SAPI 5 uh, drivers that are installed. And that means you can use a, a different synthesizer. We've also got sort of vocalizer and vocalizer embedded. There's about 20 or so different languages available. Another question there? Yeah, there's another question from, uh, apologies if I pronounce uh, your name wrong, Nivi. Um, uh, how does it handle specialised content like mathematical forms? I honestly don't know the answer to that question. I'm really sorry. I will have to go away and find out for you. <laughs> um, Simon, do you know? Uh, I believe we have support for MathML, but it depends mm -hmm. how it's been tagged. Uh, so, yeah, I think that's one we should we should follow up afterwards to make sure we've uh, we've got the right information. Sorry, I couldn't answer that one. Uh, anything else? I think there's, there's definitely been a, there's been a very lively discussion as well in in the chat, which is great to see, and also by people who are who are users of um, magnification speech as well. It was really really interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point, though. I think any and again, if any questions come to mind later on, they kind of wish you'd asked and, and forgot. You know, pop them pop them in the chat, and we can follow up with with Jane and Simon. Um, afterwards and get get all that information to you yeah. as well so, so um, i would i would just say before we finish that um i i, I noticed um in in the discussion group that um mm -hmm. some people are going to do the tech ability show in leeds uh, later in the month so, oh yeah. yeah so if you want to come and have a chat uh, we'll be there um also when i share the the presentation we've got some links so um if you want to request a callback from somebody to have a you know a deeper discussion we can do that We've also got some uh, some guides for downloads. We've got an educator's guide, which will give you an overview. Um, we've got a justification document, which will match particular student needs with particular student features, so, so software features. So a couple of things that I tried to do there, um, but in more detail. And then also linking through to our training material, which shows you how to use them. Um, we've got 30 day trials available. So I know some students with DSA assessments are waiting and waiting for their funding. So if you want to use a 30 day trial while you're waiting, that's available if you want to try it for yourself. Um, as I said, we've got these online tutorials. We've got tutorials for professional assistive technology professionals as well as users. Um, and also, I will just briefly mention for any uh, institutions that haven't yet signed up for RNIB Bookshare, I would strongly recommend that. Um, with access to accessible study material which is also something that we can link through to and maybe look at in another session okay yeah amazing i think this i think you know one thing we've um learned as well is that you know i think there's so much to talk about here mm. there's one there's so, i mean i know there's other forms of you know assistive tech in this area as well so and again we're going to hand over to to Roz now who's going to start to, i hope jane and simon you're able to stick around if you can because i think it'd be really good to get your input in this conversation Thank but you. also I think today as well is really it's really interesting to see how much um, engagement there is with this topic and what we, you know Roz and I have been talking a bit about is do we need maybe more of a, a group or dedicated community around around all of this so I'll just plant that seed just now <laughs> for you to think about.